Hello friends and welcome. Today we've got crazy amounts of information to go over. I've got a bulleted list. Some of this review, I'm not going to spend much time on that, but then we're really going to dig into the meat of the word. We've been doing a lot of study on Revelation or in the book of Revelation, but not so much with Matthew 24. So we're going to get a little bit more of a balanced perspective today. And I think you're going to be really encouraged and maybe even blown away by what you see uh, in the word, not just in uh, the English version, but also we're going to dive into some of the Greek. Uh, Lord, please show us amazing things in your word. And as is our custom, we're just randomly opening the Bible up. And this took us to Jeremiah 49. I've been spending a lot of time in Jeremiah. Um, I don't have anything noted, but I do have something written down here uh, next to verse 7 concerning Edom. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Is there no longer wisdom in Timon? Has counsel perished from the prudent? Has their wisdom decayed? Turn and flee, hide in deep caves, you who live in Dedan, for I will bring disaster on Esau at the time I punish him. And so my note over here is Edom uh, was the direct descendant of Abraham through Jacob's brother Esau. Uh, he would not recover as a nation from God's wrath. This must have hit very close to home for Israel and its largest tribe at the time, Judah. So we're looking at vengeance on a nation, but a nation that's very close to Israel at the same time. So there may be something to that. Uh, we do have some nations close to us in proximity and also uh, per ancestry, common ancestry. Uh, so... Lord, thank you for showing us these things. Help us to be watchful and patient. Now, in terms of review, uh, let's look at Revelation chapter 1. Now, we've been over this chapter many times. Today, we're going to look at verse 1 in the Greek. Now, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which gave him God to show the bond servants of him what things it behooves to take place in quickness. I've got that highlighted. And he signified it, having sent through the angel of him to the servant of him, John. All right, so we're going to stop right there and spend a little bit of time on this word, quickness. Because if we look at the King James Version, it says shortly. Well, that's an adverb. And we've looked at different, um, pr not pronunciation, but grammar uses for these words. So the L-Y, that's going to be an adverb. It's going to describe a verb, okay? Uh, with the NIV, I believe it's suddenly that um, when these things take place, they're going to start all at once. Um, and then with it, uh, referring to shortly, that may seem like it would happen within a, a quick or a soon time from the writing of the book of Revelation. But when we look at the original Greek, it is actually using a noun, quickness, a noun. So what's happening here is that we are looking at uh, what is a noun? A noun is a person, place, thing, or an idea. So these things, when they happen, they will be related to an idea, a mood, a concept, an entity, if you will. It has a start point, it has an end point, and it is happening in quick succession. So this is a noun. It says its own defined, confined article that we are referring to. That's it. It's not that it's describing something else. It is its own thing, its own entity. So when we are looking at this timeline, it will happen in a manner that is happening very fast. So when we look at our timeline, we see things that have been occurring with much speed. Uh, we have the Revelation 12 sign 
And then just a few years after that, 2020, we saw the whole world in lockdown. Crazy things were happening. Liberties were being taken away. We had to put things on our faces. So when these things begin to happen, it didn't mean that they were going to happen soon after the writing. It didn't mean that they were going to happen suddenly and then life was going to change for seven years and be this awful time of tribulation. No, when these things happen, it will happen with quickness, with speed. So think of it as a busted water pipe. Everything's fine and then maybe some drips, maybe some leaks, and then it gets greater and then boom. It's, it's all over the place. It's going to consume people. And that has been the experience of many. Maybe not in the United States, but we've got Israel, we've got Australia, Greece, uh, Sweden. France's own president has declared a war on people who do not have the injection. Now, this is not an anti-vaxxer channel at all. Not at all. But the thing that we are looking at is one world government right here. That is the problem. The abomination of desolation. The abomination has taken place. There has been a contamination in our bodies, the temple of God. That's going to bring forth des the desolation. And we all know that that is coming. Okay. It is here now. How do we know that? Well, in Revelation 12, we see Michael fighting a war in the heavens. And we saw in a previous video how the word for heavens can mean skies. It can mean atmosphere. And what do we have now? All over the world, crazy weather, blizzards, flooding, tsunamis, volcanoes, earthquakes. It's here. It's here. And we're not going to go back not for likely years, okay? It's just starting. We also talked about the days of Noah and we looked at the sword, how when you know the titans or the giants rose up and God decided, hey, that's enough, he did bring the sword. Whether that was you know the same thing that, that we saw with David and the census, with the angel coming down and killing people, Likely that was a meteor strike. Many. Um, was it like that? That involves the heavens. So that's a possibility. Or were they literally killing each other? That could be too. But it's likely it was not just the titans or the giants. It was everybody. We also saw, I believe it was the book of Jubilee, where there was famine. God decided, hey, I'm cutting off your food supply. Your seeds are not going to produce in the effort to get man to turn back to him, well, what did they do instead? They started engaging in cannibalism. They didn't want to turn to God. They started attacking each other. Lastly, we also, I didn't read this portion, but I'm going to do that now. I just instinctively stopped before I got there. All right, verse 18. And their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands, according to their choice. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air, and taught the mixture of animals of one species with the other, and order therewith to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth, and it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon earth, all men and all animals." So when Jesus was talking to his disciples about the days of Noah, they weren't thinking, oh, it, it's going to be kind of normal. No, they realized that this was going to be a very wicked time, a wicked generation. Okay, so jumping back to our notes. There we go. All right. Um, next, what we're going to look at today, Matthew 24. So let's get over there. All right. So Jesus is giving us warnings 
throughout this whole chapter. Do not be deceived. There are going to be false Christs rising up. What he also continues in is what we're going to focus on today. I, I will read it in context. Verse 26, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Or behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Remember that verse. We're going to come back to it. This is very, very important. Verse 28, For whosoever, or for wheresoever the carcasses, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. One more. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Okay. So that's a lot. We have just read quite a bit. And prior to this, uh, we read about verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation, such as not, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. So prior to this, we're talking about being handed over by neighbors, by friend, uh, family members, friends. Many will be uh, offended. Verse 9, then Shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you? And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. When will this happen? This will happen while nation, nations are rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. This is happening now. Not only the natural disasters, but also people are being afflicted. They are being handed over. We're seeing that in China. We're seeing that in Australia, even in Canada. I mean, it is happening everywhere. And when I read about, you know, the neighboring country, Edom, in our opening scripture, I thought about Canada. I did. So let's go ahead and take a look at our notes, and then we're going to break this down. Okay. So the carcass. Where the carcasses are, the eagles, or some translations say vultures, will be gathered. Okay? When we look at that, it is directly after the reference to tribulation. I believe, and I've never heard this, I've never thought this way before, but I believe the carcass is referring to the martyrs. Now, I know that that sounds a little vulgar sometimes that, I mean, was that a common saying? Could be. But in this case, I believe that that's what this is referring to is that the carcass, wherever the, the martyrs are, wherever people have been killed for their faith, there the eagles, the angels will be gathered. God is going to allow there to be an offense against his people before he acts. And I know that does seem counterintuitive. Uh, it's, it's the opposite of what many people are teaching on their channels based on the reference to the days of Noah. But we know, you know, eating and drinking, that wasn't, that wasn't a good reference. It was cannibalism. It was abominations. So we can't say, oh, we, you know, everything's going to be normal. It's not going to be normal. It's going to be a time worthy of great wrath, which, which we, yes, we do see ourselves in, and it's going to get worse. Okay. And then shall the, the coming of man be. 
Interestingly, oh, let's just jump to our notes and we'll go that way. We're going to see the sky darken right after that verse. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Now we're all familiar with Revelation 6, the sixth seal, the sun darkens. And we talked about, well, is that, you know, this word here for darkens is a little different than the one in Revelation 6. It's more like the one in Revelation 8 with the fourth seal as well as Revelation 9 with the, excuse me, fifth, fourth trumpet and fifth trumpet. And that will be from a planetary eclipse when that happens. And we've got videos on that as well. Uh, with the fifth trumpet, that is the opening of the abyss. The fourth trumpet is just the darkness, which will herald in that eclipsing planet. The interesting thing that I want to point out here, uh, we've got from 2 Thessalonians 2 that the man of sin be revealed. And we'll look at that because you know how I like to keep things in context. If you want to pause, you're certainly free to do that. But I'm just going to click through this chapter, and then we're, we're going to look at verse 3 in particular. Let's read it in context. Now we beseech thee, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, okay? neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Okay, we're going back to that deception. For that day shall not come, except there be there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay, so that does have to happen first. And let's put, get our notes up here. It could be that he is revealed before the darkness. It could be after, uh, just based on... From what I'm seeing in the stars, I think that the Antichrist will come after the darkness. But we're, we're going to pull that up. And then, as we've seen in our studies with Revelation 13, uh, the mark of the beast comes after the Antichrist. But here's the interesting thing. We're going to touch on that. Uh, Matthew 24, lightning from the east to west, and Revelation 8. Eight, the seventh seal, lightning and thunderings. And I never had paired the seventh seal with Matthew 24 in the past, but um, that, that could be the bridegroom tarries. So when the darkness comes from Matthew 29, 24-29, great. But if we're still here, I don't want people to be disillusioned like, what, like what's going on. The real clue that we're looking for from Matthew 24 may be verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And when we look at Revelation chapter 8, verse 1, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Okay, That may mean that there's going to be a break from these you know, wars in the heavens, the disasters. Verse two, and I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets. Okay, Matthew 24 references a trumpet. We're going to look at that one more time. Verse three, and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. So boom. We've got our lightning here, and I believe that we can map it back to Matthew 24. That that's how it's going to unfold, like this. Likely it will be something like 
plasma lightning. Um, there's lots of references. I was even reading this morning in Jeremiah, I believe it was 50, 51, um, about the destroyer. And that is a name for one of these planets that has come by. And the historical account was that it had these tentacles of lightning that came between the two planets. All right. Uh, so scary things are going to be happening. And I don't want anybody to feel disillusioned if the darkness comes and there's no rapture. The rapture is coming. The Son of God will be coming in the clouds. Um, but I believe it's going to be more closely associated with the time of this lightning with the seventh seal than the sixth seal darkness. Now we're going to open Stellarium up because really with the last video that we did, I, I saw what was in the skies, what was in the signs, and I, I had a hard time uh, because, you know, there has been so much association with the darkness of the sixth seal and the coming of the Son of Man. I mean, we hardly ever talk about the seventh seal. They clump it up in with the first four trumpets, but it's its own separate and unique a time. Uh, so we're here at Stellarium and my mouse just froze. Okay, there it is. Stellarium-web.org and we're going to get our filters going on here. We are going to look for the sun because we know from Revelation 1, 16 that the sun is what strengthens everything. So... We're looking for the sun. Uh, it will go into a conjunction with Uranus. That is the seventh planet, the seventh seal. Might not be the seventh planet, but it's the seventh one that the sun will encounter in order since the Revelation 12 sign with the living creatures and all how all of that plays out. The sun has been in conjunction with Uranus since you know the revelation 12 sign once a year but this is with the order of the four living creatures we've gone through all of these things i can do that briefly right now so we've got revelation 4 it introduces the four living creatures uh the throne is set in heavens uh or the heavens space um the emerald rainbow is the aurora borealis or the northern lights the 24 elders represent the 24 time segments by which we view the skies. The sea of crystal glass is space, all sparkly. The four beasts full of eyes, those eyes are actually stars. They are the constellations Leo, Taurus with the face of an ox. The living creature with the face of a man is Aquarius, and the living creature with the face of an eagle is Aquila. We have the four horsemen, uh, Jupiter, Mars, Mercury, the black planet, Pale Horse, Saturn, Hades, Pluto, and their uh, alignments. We've talked about all of that. And then we also have the last three seals, the ones without horsemen. I went ahead and I updated the image um, with the fifth seal just to highlight the fact that uh, Ara, the altar, is here as well uh, with the saints crying out. We got the eagle's wings, Aquila right here. I guess I could move that a little bit, but we've got a perfect alignment. The uh, martyrs, the fifth uh, seal planet Venus are under the Ara altar, right as the sun is going into conjunction with it. It's actually in Sagittarius, the first horseman, with the bow and the crown. I mean, it's all just lining up so beautifully. Uh, next, with uh, the sixth seal and the water judgments, Neptune, uh, every island will flee. Um, the mountains will be moved from their places. All of these things are going to happen with the sixth seal. And that's going to be the sun, again, going into conjunction with Neptune. And then we have the seventh seal, air judgments, uh, lightning, thunder, voices. Um, the false prophet is also going to make an appearance at that time. Uh, it has the, sounds like a lamb, Aries, but it speaks, or I'm sorry, it looks like the lamb Aries, but it speaks like Draco the dragon. 
So it looks like just before this happens, the false, uh, false prophet will come along. And over here, we see the Antichrist comet Leonard that came from the area with the feet of the bear, the body of the leopard, and the mouth of the lion, Leo Minor, the smaller lion. Uh, we're going to look at that real quick just because of 2 Thessalonians 2, how it talks about the man of sin or lawlessness or perdition coming on the scene. So again, starting from today, we've zoomed it in a little bit. Uh, we're just leaving Sagittarius, or the sun is just leaving Sagittarius. We've got Comet Leonard over here. Now I'm going to click on Comet Leonard, and we're going to look at uh, that transit right there. We're going to look for him to get into this crown area. Uh, but first, he's going to hit the hooves of the archer Sagittarius. Uh, that may be where he gets the mortal head wound. Um, when we look at IPG2, uh, we've looked at this a number of times, and for some reason they've updated their thumbnail to likely be the next event that we should be looking for, um, which is the mortal head wound of the child here, or the Antichrist. So when I thought of celebrities with mortal head wounds in the past, uh, Christopher Reeves came to mind or I should say uh, celebrities or famous people with horsing accidents, horse riding accidents. Uh, and Barack Obama, if he is the Antichrist, I don't know. A lot of people think so. Um, but he himself paid a lot of tribute to Christopher Reeves while he was in the White House um, after his death. Um, there was also the act that the president signed uh, for paralysis, for people with uh, paralysis, uh, disabilities, handicaps, that more research would be done in that area. So when we look at the stars, uh, we're gonna see Comet Leonard and Stellaria may jump around, but Comet Leonard is gonna go into um, microscopium, which may, you know, pay tribute to all of the, the microscopic organisms, we'll say that, that we're having to deal with. And then he's going, going to go right into the hooves of Sagittarius. And we'll do this a little more quickly. But that's gonna happen beginning of May. The thing with that is that where is the sun at this time? The sun is already Let's take a look. So we're, the sun is already in the seventh seal. So seventh seal of Uranus. So Neptune with the darkness has been passed. We'll take a look where Neptune was. Way back here. And that's going to be in March, mid-March. So, you know, again, be prayerful over all of these things, but it looks like there's going to be a little bit of time between when we see that darkness, and it could be the three days of darkness. Uh, I know Sister Carrie Ann Giddens has mentioned that happening over Passover. Um, Passover is going to be in April this year. It could. It could happen then. It may happen with the fourth and fifth trumpet with that darkness in 2023, January. But this is what I'm seeing in terms of a timeline. The false prophet, uh, like with the appearance like a lamb, is going to go off into Draco, the dragon constellation. But that's what I'm seeing is that May, could be even later, but that's when that lightning is going to come in and we're, we're by that time, we're already past the sixth seal. So lots of turbulence, lots of strange things happening. Um, going back to today, I don't want people to be overly worked up about these things. Um, looking at our timeline, 
Yeah, I mean, we are past the fifth seal, and that means a lot of trouble for other countries. Uh, and some of you are in those countries. We just dodged a major bullet here in the United States. And again, this isn't a, an anti-vaxxer channel. We just don't want to be part of the one world governance. That's it. Um, but the Supreme Court ruled that we don't have to have an injection in order to work at companies with over 100 people. Now, that doesn't mean that those companies themselves won't declare their own sort of mandates and require workers. I mean, there was an article stating that Chase Bank is going to fire everybody who's not vaccinated. Well, that impacts a very, you know, close family member for somebody that I love. Okay, she may lose her job. So these are really tough decisions that we're going to have to make. But by God's grace, we can do that. We can make those decisions. He will be with us through these times. Now, I want to share a dream with you that I had about a wild she-bear. Okay. This bear, uh, I was working at like a refuge, wildlife refuge or a campground. And we were accepting like young animals at like a daycare for, you know, the, the wild creatures of the forest. I remember a snow leopard kind of putting her little cub in this hole near the swing set or something that was a little den where that little cub was gonna be. And I, I was like, okay, well, we'll watch your cub while you go do your thing. Well, a she bear comes with her cub and for trying to take the cub like normal, but the she bear wants to come inside and she's upset. She's very angry. And we're just running around, you know, trying to figure out how to shut the door and put her out and keep everybody else safe inside. And long story, well, while I was running around, I saw my Bible and I was like, okay, I'll come back and get that later. Next thing I knew, the Bible was in my arms and like right next to my heart, like I was clutching it very tightly. And so at some point, you know, we're going in the basement, we're going all over and I get out to the deck with some of the other, you know, camp counselors, I guess. And we're trying to figure out, you know, what to do amongst ourselves. And when I woke up, it occurred to me that the bear was God. The bear was God and the, the little baby creatures, they were the people, you know, that that we counselors are trying to shepherd and we're not letting God show his power enough or we're, we're consulting each other. But the place that we really need to go to is his word. And I'm learning that more and more and more. Okay. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and open and see, Lord, please show us great and amazing things. Isaiah uh, chapter 29 verse 16, you turn things upside down as if the potter were thought to be the clay. Shall what is formed say to him who formed it, he did not make me? Can the pot say of the potter, he knows nothing? That fits right into that dream. That fits right into our dream. Let's keep turning to the Bible. I was going to share another dream, but I think it's important. Let's leave with that note. Let's keep turning to the Bible. Lord, we humble ourselves. You are about to do great and amazing things. And we do not want to try to contain you in our own little genie bottle or something, Lord. You are bigger. You're not the pot. You're the potter. You're, you're bigger. Lord, we want to get out of your way. We want to see your kingdom come, your revival. Not to worry, not to stress, but to trust you, to put our lives in your hands, to prepare and just turn our eyes to you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. God bless.